Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial in <coughs> ethical hacking and penetration testing. So in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to go and install the Cal Linux. I'll continue with the installation of Windows 7 in this version and uh, I'll go and select install now. And by the time it gets installed, I'll also go and show you some specific things as to what exact. Okay, so before I proceed, we have it over here. I would be installing the 36, 32 bit file and let's use ultimate. It has everything Windows 7 Ultimate activated 32 bit perfect. And yes, I accept. Advanced and yes, uh, perfect. Next. Okay. So till the time it gets installed, let's see where we have on our Cal Linux. Okay, it will take another five minutes, I believe, to install. So by the time till this gets installed, let's talk about uh, ethical hacking. So computer attacks have been uh, tar uh, the ta targeted undisclosed vulnerabilities are more common and they last longer than many security researchers uh, previously thought. So there is something called as zero-day attack nowadays, uh, which has become more popular. Uh, the typical zero-day attack by definition uh, ha it says that exploit uh, it exploits software flaws before they are publicly disclosed. That means it lasts on an average of uh, around uh, let's say 300 days with some lasting as two and a half years as well. So zero-day attacks are meaner and they are more rampant than you can ever think of. So um, you can say that researchers said that their findings suggest that uh, this can be much uh, danger than the normal and zero-day attacks are difficult to prevent because they exploit unknown vulnerabilities for which there are no patches, no antivirus or not even intrusion reduction signatures. The one of the fa most famous virus that was created till now was the Stuxnet malware which went ahead and you can say as it disabled uh, the whole of uh, nuclear research center of Iran. So and um, it seems that as long as the software will have bugs and the development of exploits for new vulnerabilities will be a profitable activity, it will be exposed to zero day attacks. So th these are there's some kind of viruses that you cannot go ahead and prevent it. So you need to make sure that whatever you're installing is foolproof because it cannot be foolproof but still you need to know that what you are trying to install and where you're going to connect. However, it is doubtful that repacking alone can account for an increase up to 5 orders of magnitude but still more likely this increase in result of extensive use of virus be proven that there are exploits in other ma malware as well. That means you can still go ahead and exploit a uh, virus as well. So it is important to bear in mind before uh, learning ethical hacking that attackers break into systems for various purposes. Therefore, it is important to comprehend how malicious hackers exploit systems and the probable reasons behind the attack. So if you know what you're doing, it's fine. But there are some people who don't know what they're doing. So it will be very hard for you to go and actually trace them. Ethical hacking is the process of checking and testing the organization network for possible loopholes and vulnerabilities. And that's you, what you would be doing once you go and learn this. The individuals or experts who perform ethical hacking are called as white hats. Uh, they perform hacking in ethic ways without causing any damage to computer system and thereby increasing the security parameter of an organization. There are different types of hackers, uh, some called as white hats, black hats and there are even grey hat uh, hackers. White hats are the people who do it for good. Black hats obviously you must have guessed it right that yes they are the bad guys and there are some people called as grey hat hackers. They can be called as hacktivist as well or something like that. So uh, we would be covering as to we would be thinking in this tutorial as to how a black hat goes ahead and hacks into system and the same way we would be using. But just in mind, uh, make sure that just by learning Cal Linux alone, it won't uh, make you some kind of a very genius person because there are people who go ahead and sit uh, months and years to go ahead and create a single exploit, and that exploit can straight away go ahead and uh, let's say make your foolproof plan a full of loopholes. So you cannot expect everything to be the best way. So you need to go ahead and keep yourself under testing. You need to go ahead and test each and everything uh, that you have. You, you need to keep, go ahead and keep learning yourself. That's how it will work. So there is one question though that why do people go ahead and hack other people's stuff? So in these tutorials further on I would be using the specific terminologies which would be very much necessary for you to understand. So the first thing would be the hack value and the hack value is a notion among all hackers that something is worth doing which is interesting 
and hackers might feel that breaking down the toughest network security might give them great satisfaction and that is something they have accomplished not everyone could do that can be one of the reasons why they hack or another thing is uh, an exploit exploit is defined as a way to breach security on an IT system through vulnerability vulnerability is a weakness in design and implementation error that can lead to unexpected or undesirable event let's say uh, you have not yet patched your uh, Windows 7 version or the Windows 8 version or so that that means that there can be a loophole in your security and it can still be hacked and at that point of time malicious hackers create exploits or you can see as viruses and the, those viruses and exploits go ahead and harm your system then they have zero day attacks zero day attacks are those with that means that they have not even known to normal people that okay these are the kind of exploits that are there and uh, there's something also called as daisy chaining attackers who get away with database theft usually complete their task and backtrack to cover their ta tracks by destroying logs. The attackers gain control of other systems and use them for malicious activities. It becomes difficult to identify these attackers as they use other systems to perform illegal activities than using their own. And the same can be done through Kali Linux. So let's check if... Okay, so we have our Kali Linux installed. So let's go ahead and check it over here. Uh, use a network mirror. No. And it will take hardly a few minutes to go and install this. It's almost over. Same over here. So let's wait till these things get installed. So it seems like our Windows 7 has started. And make sure that you install uh, the VMware tools before you go ahead and start anything, uh, practicing anything. The reason being that we need VMware tools for a lot of lots of things. That's the reason. Okay, perfect. Let's wait till this gets started. Seems like Windows 7 has started. Where are we on Cal Linux? It's still time to configure the package manager. Yes, seems like our Cal Linux is back on track. So install the grub boot record and in case you don't know what grub is, you need to go ahead and select yes always because if you're trying to dual boot sometime later on, then you will surely need the grub bootloader. That's why. So, and the things that we would be learning in Cal Linux would be information gathering, uh, sniffing, spoofing, eavesdropping, session hijacking, MITM, that's man in the middle attack or monkey in the middle attacks, SQL injection, ARP poisoning, and a lot of password based attacks. We'd also go ahead and use the malwares that we have inbuilt inside. I'll select continue. Uh, then we will target the footprinting and DDoS attacks that's distributed denial of service attacks and denial of service attacks. We will also be going ahead and backdooring everything so that uh, in case uh, due to some reason if we lose our connection we will still be able to enter our own uh, operating system or our target system. So I believe that's getting installed. So let's check. Perfect. Seems like our Windows version is starting. Okay, perfect. So this is how we can go and install the operating systems. So that is it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial I'll be going and letting you know as to how we can go and start them and configure them.